Who is more likely to take in a stray dog? I kind of feel like it would be both of us. Yeah, I agree. Hi, Rar. I'm a dragon from Kun Lun. I'm Lorraine. Hi, whoosh, my fist lights up. I'm Langston. <laughs> <laughs> Earth's Mightiest Show. Where we talk about all of the biggest stuff in the Marvel Universe. And tomorrow is the big day when the new season of Marvel's Iron Fist hits Netflix. So the stars are stopping by, Finn Jones and Jessica Hennick, and we're going to hang out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's not the only thing that drops tomorrow. Oh, true. Uh, Marvel's Spider-Man. It hits store shelves tomorrow for the PS4. But here at Marvel HQ, we got a little early access, and we were uh, amazed. Oh, yeah. We got to play it for a bit, and we were web-slinging, fighting baddies. It is so good, but that is just scratching the surface. Our very own Ryan Panagos, AKA Marvel's Agent M, put in some serious hours into the game. Yeah, that's right. He's in our gaming lounge with his most important things you need to do in the game on day one. Hey, look, guys, I'm so excited. I'm about to turn on the PlayStation 4 to play Marvel Spider-Man, but the game has so many awesome layers, it will keep you playing for so long. But day one, here's what I recommend you guys get into. One, get out there and be Spidey. Dive right into the story of the game kicks you off right into the action and you should dive right into the big opening mission versus Wilson Fisk and his goons. Two, swing around Spidey's New York City. Literally, just go swinging around the city for a while once you have more of the open world to explore. It's pretty much video game zen. Three, search for some swag. While you're out there exploring, you can start to get your hands on all kinds of collectibles. You're definitely gonna wanna get all the backpacks, trust me. Four, stop some bad guys. The city that never sleeps is also a city full of action and in need of you, their friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Stop a robbery or a shootout or my favorite, thwip into a chase through Manhattan. Five, meet your people. Sure, you can swing above the New Yorkers, but you can also get street level and interact with many, many people on the street. Get a fist bump, take a selfie. This is like the most amazing, massive game. The story is full of great uh, adventures, characters, twists and turns, follow the narrative, but please, 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 please do not spoil it for anyone. That's it for me from the gaming lounge. I'm gonna keep playing or start playing or whatever I'm doing here. Remember, pick up Marvel Spider-Man exclusively for the PlayStation 4, September 7th. Oh my God, that's tomorrow. Oh, Ryan, we're jealous. No fair. Yeah, I want to just go swing through the city and like just say hi to people and make friends, find new new people to yeah, hang out with stop me. Stop some bank robberies. Yeah, all, sure, why not? All in a day for the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, but there's something else I'm excited to see. Ooh, what's that? Your chat with the stars of Marvel's Iron Fist. Check this out. I am here with Finn Jones and Jessica Hennick from Marvel's Iron Fist. Wait, what's, what's, what are we whispering about? <laughs> we were uh, checking out comics. The comics. Oh yeah, we put out some comics that might look familiar to you. Some Iron Fist, Defenders, Daredevil, you know those guys. Like some of your pals that you hang Aww. out with. We need some Daughters of the Dragon up in here. You definitely do. Always. <laughs> Always. Um, but let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about season two, Marvel's Iron Fist. You guys have been through a lot because it hasn't just been the first season of Iron Fist. You've also been delving into other series. Where do we meet your characters at the beginning of the show? So at the beginning of the show, um, well, the last thing that Daredevil says to Danny at the end of Defenders is protect my city. And we start season two and Danny's doing that. He's out all night being a vigilante. Uh, he's a lot more capable, confident. The power is more readily available. And he's moved in with his wonderful girlfriend, Colleen Wing. Um, and he's struggling to try and balance it all. And where is Colleen? Well, at the end of Defenders, she chopped the head off her surrogate father. Yeah, rough Which day. Which is pretty extreme. Watch. So yeah. basically when we find her, she's just exercised anything from her life that reminds her of the hand. She closed the dojo, she stopped teaching, she put her katana up, she doesn't want to fight, she doesn't want to be a vigilante, and she's just trying to do good. She spends her time doing volunteer work. But I think she's having a bit of an identity crisis because she's, it's hard to stay at home and and see Danny come home having just saved Chinatown and for her to not be a part of that. I know, well, I will say that I have watched quite a lot of this season. I got to watch a little bit in advance. Uh, how was this season different for you guys than the previous season? We're not at Rand Enterprises anymore. There's no more boardroom stuff. It's very much more on the, on streets, the streets of Chinatown. And some coding of Chinatown. Oh, right. yeah. Right. Did you do that? I did it. It's in the show, dude. <laughs> How did that work out? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so that's a little tidbit for you guys. That's funny. 
Uh, it's Chinatown. Secret it's Chinatown. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been so fun to see across series. You know, we were talking earlier a little bit about Luke Cage and Misty Knight. Uh, to see both of your characters get to do these different team ups. And now we first got that look at Daughters of the Dragon for us comic book fans, uh, Misty and Colleen in Marvel's Luke Cage. Tell me what's going on. Well, really, this season we're kind of building the foundation of their relationship because in Defenders they were two strangers. And uh, then in Luke Cage, we're kind of survivors of everything that happened mm -hmm. thrust together. And so with this season, we're, we're actually building the foundation of, OK, do they like each other? Are they friends? <laughs> do they just feel like they owe each other because she saved her and she lost her arm because of that? And actually, they're fi we're finding that, that they have quite a bit to discuss. Love it all day. Um, also, we're introducing a new character. Comic book fans will know her as Typhoid Mary in the series Mary, who first encounters Danny. What can you tell us about um, Danny and, and Mary meeting? Danny's um, gallant. Danny's very gallant. Oh, how nice. Yeah. Um, well, Mary uh, appears in Danny's life quite abruptly, and he can tell that she's a little bit different. You know, he keeps on bumping into her, like, coincidentally, and he wants to almost, like, help her out. You know, he sees that she's uh, she's struggling a little bit in New York. She's she's just come to New York for the first time. Danny knows what it feels like to be in that situation. So he's just being like, you know, a good dude on the street and trying to help a neighbor out. And boy, does that go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the only problem potentially going on. Davos is back, mm. your sort of brother from Kunlun. Yeah. Uh, from another mother. From, from another, another mother. mother. Uh, yes. <laughs> what can you tell us about where Davos is and how you guys are feeling? Because it hasn't always been sunshine and roses between all of y'all. No. Uh, I, well, Danny grew up with Davos, and I think at the center of their relationship is love. Like, they really care about each other. They, they are brothers. And because of the events that happened in Kunlun and the fallout from it, there's a lot of resentment. That Davos wants the fist. You know, he wants to see Danny suffer for, for, for what he has done, uh, but then Danny wants to bring Davos back into himself. Like, he knows, he knows Davos when he was a child. Like, he knows who he really is in his soul, and he feels like Davos has become corrupt over time, and, he, and so there's that kind of battle going on throughout, throughout the season. Well, I hope Danny can just save all of the strays and take in everybody and do all the things. Um, well, thank you so much for talking with me, but... Would you like to play a game? Please. Yay! Yay! Please, games. let's play games. This is the newly paired game. I'm going to be asking a question about your characters. You both have to agree which character would be most likely to do a certain thing. Oh, okay, cool. So like, who would be most likely to do X? If you match, then you get a point. If you don't match, no points. Are you ready? I'm ready. Born ready. Okay, here we go. The first question is, who is more likely to go out dancing? Colleen or Danny? Got it. <laughs> On your mark, get set, reveal. Danny! Yeah. I'm so surprised by that answer. Are you? I don't know why. Oh. That's funny. All right, one point in the hopper, we got it. So it's like, are we truly meant to be together or, or not? That's the game. I used to play this as a kid in the, in the playground. Who would be better at Scrabble? <sighs> got it. <laughs> On your mark, get set, go. Yay! Yeah! <laughs> Amazing. All right. Who is more likely to cry during a film or Got movie? It. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> Reveal. Bam. <laughs> you guys are crushing it. It's so easy. So easy. <laughs> All right. Who is more likely to forget to bring a sweater when it's chilly outside? <laughs> it's even in the script. <laughs> Isn't it? You were like, you're gonna catch, you're gonna catch a cold. Oh my Do god, remember? that's hilarious! Reveal it though. Oh, oh yeah, we both the same. Who is more likely to take in a stray dog? Oh, this oh. is a hard one because I kind of feel like it would be both of us. Yeah, I agree. Um, can we do? Okay, can we do both? You guys are cheating right well, in front no, of me. We, we agreed, and <laughs> we, agree. we just okay. found a, a way oh, to like. Oh boy! No! <laughs> yeah. In Dan. Ding ding ding. Who's more likely to dress up for Halloween? Uh, we're on a winning streak. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> Who's more likely to dress up for Halloween? Um, oh, I kind of feel like it would be... You don't! We don't discuss it before all you right. show your answer! Alright, 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 alright. All right, all right, all right, you have to make right, a choice right. and reveal. Good job! You still did it! Yes! <laughs> yes! yes. <laughs> nice! Have we beat all the other couples that have come on the Actually, show? yes, you have the highest score yet. OTP wow. in the Danny, house. Danny and Colleen are the best couple. 
We are the well, best. Thank you guys so much. Be sure to watch Marvel's Iron Fist Season 2 only on Netflix tomorrow. They crushed it. Yay! All right. Danny yeah. and Colleen for the win. Mm -hmm. That's why they're such a great team. Truth. Proof positive. Right there. <laughs> uh, we also took some ridiculous pictures, uh, our favorite of which you guys can check out. Yeah, we posted it on the Earth's Mightiest Show Facebook page, so go like it and check it out, please. Yeah, yeah, and make sure you watch that new season because you're going to love it. Oh, you know what else you're going to love? You're also going to love our final installment of Master Comics Theater presented by Marvel Create Your Own from Tap Tap Comics. Yeah, for the last three weeks we've been sharing a new chapter of a special Hawkeye comic created using the Tap Tap Comics app written by Lockjaw writer Daniel Kibblesmith. And this is the final chapter, so enjoy the epic conclusion! This week on Master Comics Theater, presented by Tap Tap Comics, we bring you the fourth and final installment of Kate Bishop, Hawkeye, the real Hawkeye, in Don't Quote Me! Written by Daniel Kibblesmith with art created using the Marvel Create Your Own app from Tap Tap Comics. I am your trusty narrator, Langston Belton, here in the role of Kate Bishop, the lovely Lorraine Sink, and joining us in the role of Modoc, the Daniel Kibblesmith. You return to meet Modoc, taking on Kate Bishop in the midst of a jewelry store heist. Modoc is like a less hot version of the killer doll from that movie, and I'm going to beat him the same way I beat Jamie Siegel and her stupid, not even that scary movie. Cute little T-Rex arms you got there. With my eyes closed. Too bad they can't cover your face! Modoc, helplessly reaching for his face, squints in pain as Kate's arrow radiantly explodes! Flash grenade arrow. It's in the Hawkeye starter kit. <coughs> Knockout gas chaser. Honestly, they should sell these in bulk. So, yeah, that happened. He's down. That flash grenade idea was brilliant. Yeah, he's supposed to be the genius, but I'm the one who had the light bulb moment. <laughs> and you can quote me on that. Lol, I'm just kidding, please don't. <laughs> hey, so do you know if this jewelry store is giving out, like, rewards or anything? And thank you to our author and friend Daniel Kebblesmith for creating this comic and letting us bring it to life at marvel.taptapcomics.com. Well done, Daniel Kibblesmith. Well done, Lorraine Sink. Well done, Langston Belt. And you too can create your own comic at marvelcreateyourown.taptapcomics.com. Oh, and be sure to tell us what you're most excited to do when you start playing Marvel Spider-Man on PS4 and use the hashtag Earth's Mightiest Show. See you next time. I'm Rain. And I'm Langston. This is Marvel. Your universe. Thanks for watching Earth's Mightiest Show. Hey, if you like this, you should like this and subscribe to the Marvel Channel. Or click the box over there to watch our last episode. Ooh, if you had the Iron Fist, what would you do? I would always be punching the ground and making them fly back, because that's my favorite.